Hi, friends. So we are taking advantage of the opportunity that we have to spend all this time together. Yeah. And when I got up this morning, I put on my Rescued, Restored, Thriving, and it's a Remnant Generation t-shirt. And yeah. so Annabelle and I are twins today. Can, hey. can you tell? <laughs> that is what, what mothers and daughters do. That's right. Yeah, <clears throat> mothers and daughters do that. Twin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're just having the best time today. We're, yeah. we're telling stories of Jehovah Jireh. And uh, we've been telling just some recent stories uh, the last few years, but very recent as in the last week with mm -hmm. the Remnant Generation. And while we were talking, the Lord was reminding me a, a few stories of my own. So mm -hmm. um, our our goal in this, I don't know, we don't re release, we didn't set out with a goal. Mm -hmm. We felt like God uh, encouraged us to have conversations and tell stories that will challenge our listeners, mm -hmm. we'll encourage them, we'll give them hope, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe ask them, have them ask some questions. Mm -hmm. And um, so if you have questions, you can always write in to the podcast at Impact Nations and, um, and put those questions yeah. to us. And we would love to, you know, target some specific things if that's helpful to you. Mom, to just jump in there yeah. briefly is, we're thankful for technology. Yes. <laughs> because I'm here thinking about how long it would take us to write all these stories in a book. Oh. <laughs> and because then the editors will pick out what they want and yeah. then, you know, just um, leave. So they will filter and edit a lot. That's right. You're getting the raw stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but but that these guys are getting the raw we, we get the opportunity to share the raw stuff. Yeah. And I'm just here thinking about it and I'm like, wow, these experiences um you can't you can't write everything down that's true so i'm thankful for technology yeah, today me too yeah so um how about if i pray and we we jump in sure so father mm. thank you for those who have joined us today yes, we thank so. you for this opportunity to be together in the same space mm -hmm. at the same time and uh be a blessing to one another and to our listeners. And so we invite your Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. as always, to guide us yes. in this conversation. Mm -hmm. And Lord, the, the word restoration is so important to both Annabelle and I. Mm -hmm. Lord, when, uh, when people ask me <clears throat> about my calling, I, I often talk about John 10, 10 mm -hmm. and the enemy who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. But Jesus has come that we would have abundant life. Yes. And I, that's my uh, passion is mm. that everyone would experience the abundant life that Jesus has for them, Amen. that he died for. Amen. And uh, so I ask, Lord, that mm. today th some aspect of that abundant life would be mm. um, promised to our listeners, that mm. they would grab a hold of something that you've said to them mm. and that they would remember your faithfulness mm. and... Um, just be an encouragement to mm. all of them today. Thank mm. you, Jesus. Mm. Amen. Amen. You're listening to Restoration Conversation. I'm Christina Stewart. And I'm Annabelle Nakavidi Sebachije, and we love sharing stories of rescue and restoration. So one of the questions that I get asked is um, when I tell my stories, people say, well, you say you heard God say, mm -hmm. and how does that work? You know, how do you, how do you um, yeah, know God. when yeah. it's God and when to say yes and when to move and when to be still? And um, uh, when, and I finished the lad, last podcast by talking about the fact that Steve and I have moved repeatedly in our um, call of serving the Lord, mm. and um, I couldn't, I couldn't even begin to count how many times that is. But I felt the Lord reminding me of one story. Um, so we, um, our first church plant, we moved from British Columbia on the west coast of Canada to Ontario, the center of Canada, and um, we started. We were in um, Stratford, Ontario, with mm -hmm. John and Carol Arnott. They were their church was becoming a vineyard church, mm -hmm. and then we moved to the next city over. And with a team, we planted a church, and it grew very well. And um, the Holy Spirit was moving, and it grew quickly. Mm -hmm. And um, and God was so faithful with us, and we had an amazing team of people on staff and. Lots of great things happening. And then the Holy Spirit began to move in a new way in mm -hmm. 1994 in January, and we were a part of that. And 
and just watching uh, amazing manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And our four boys were all being impacted by this, and we were going in and out of Toronto, and wow. it was all happening in our church. And um, and then uh, a year later, we were actually in uh, British Columbia, mm. and we uh, we were doing a weekend retreat with some young adults or youth or something, and. Uh, and then we went out to the coast and we uh, were visiting with some friends who were spiritual parents, John and Lori White. Mm -hmm. And um, John's a theologian, he's gone to be with the Lord now, but we were having dinner at their house and Lori White uh, said to Steve and I, it's come to me three times today that you should move back to Vancouver and plant uh, another church. Wow. And I kind of teased her. I said, oh, you just like us. You'd like us to be closer <laughs> around. And like you didn't think she was serious. Yeah. 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 And, um, but you know when someone says something to you and uh -huh. it just sticks and you're like. It just doesn't I, go. Yeah, it doesn't go away. And you're like, I wonder, Lord. Mm -hmm. And so we, we go back to Vancouver and uh, we begin to pray about whether or not this is what God is telling mm -hmm. us to do. And Steve, when Steve tells the tori story, he, he talks about some different prophetic words from people that we trust that were hmm. confirming it. And, and, you know, he would submit it and they would start prophesying. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, but there was a day that uh, I set aside to pray and fast. Mm. And, um, you know, we four young boys. It was a very busy household. We were pastoring. But I, I took this Saturday. Steve was going to be home. He could be with the boys. And so I said, I'm, I really feel like mm -hmm. I just need to retreat for the day and ask the Lord for a word to so, confirm wow. for, for in my heart what mm -hmm. we're supposed to do. And um, I can re picture the room where I, I went, went upstairs to this spare room and office sort of space, and I started to pray. And I felt like the Lord told me to read Deuteronomy 1. Hmm. And I didn't know why. That's an interesting book. Yeah, I, I don't know why, but yeah. I just felt like God said it. And so... I mean, I've been in the room like maybe five minutes wow. now. So I go upstairs and I'm I'm reading Deuteronomy 1. Mm -hmm. And then um, I get to verse 6. Mm -hmm. That's only six verses mm -hmm. in, right? And the Lord says this. The, the, the scripture says this. The Lord God said to us at Horeb, mm -hmm. You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Break camp and advance yes. to the hill country, um, which oh. is British Columbia, is the Rocky Mountains and oh. many mountain ranges. Um, go to all the neighboring peoples mm -hmm. in the Araba, in the mountains, in the western foothills, mm -hmm. uh, west coast of Canada, in mm -hmm. the Negev, and along the coast, mm -hmm. which is where Vancouver is. Wow. And uh, as far as the great river, the Euphrates, well, the main huge river going through, coming through British Columbia and out to the ocean at Vancouver is the Fraser. So I, my eyes didn't see Euphrates. I it's saw Fraser. Fraser. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I, I put my Bible down and, and I go. Like, did you break the fast? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I did. I said, Lord, it's been five minutes, but I have my word. Do I have to fast the rest know, of the right? day? <laughs> like you have your confirmation. I did, and I spent probably the rest of that hour. Wow. So maybe from 9 a.m. till 10 a.m. or mm -hmm. something. And finally, I just came downstairs and I said to Steve, okay, we're going. Mm -hmm. Like Whoa. this was as clear as clear could be. Wow. And so we'd had, we had a prophetic word that initiated mm -hmm. even the thought mm -hmm. of returning. Um, one of the prophetic words was from one of our spiritual overseers in um, the vineyard. And we're going for a walk in our city of Cambridge and, and we're sharing this story with him. And, and uh, we said, but well, we're just not sure. This was before I got the word. And we said, we're not sure what God's saying, it seems. And he, and he just looks at me and he goes, wouldn't God give you the desires of your heart? And I was like, oh. I I don't even know what those what are. are. Like I never think that way. Mm -hmm. What 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 is that desire? What are you sensing that I'm not? And mm -hmm. he and he just looked at me like I was daft. You know. He goes, "You love Vancouver. You've you've wanted to go back to Vancouver. Yes, you've been here and you faithfully served. But wouldn't God give you back what you?" And I was like, Oh. oh. <laughs> and so um, now it doesn't mean it was all easy, uh, you know, when you're following God. Mm -hmm. So we had four boys. They're all in school. Mm -hmm. They're involved in different activities. We've got a house that we had just moved into. It was like my dream house. Wow. And um, and now you have to move. But I knew I knew what God had said. Mm -hmm. And um, 
mind you, we'd already moved several times previous to that. But I, I just know God's faithfulness. I mean, when we moved from the West Coast to Ontario mm-hmm. to Stratford, I was very unhappy to start with. Wow. I, um, I didn't know anybody. I, we we left our the first house we'd ever purchased. We're into this smaller house with the four boys and f- figuring out schooling and all that. It's it's not easy following mm-hmm. God. It it costs you something, but. My faith is always in him, not mm-hmm. in my circumstances. And that's where I, w- I want to ask a question, mom. So you have four boys and they're young and they are in school and you don't, and you know, okay, God has spoken, but why was it so easy for you? To, and you said it wasn't easy, but I would love to, for you to take us through the process of your response. Because then some of, some of us who are mothers mm. <laughs> with babies, it is so easy to say, well, I know God has spoken. I know I'm going to obey, yeah, right? I'm not intended yeah. not to obey, right. but I'm going to obey later. Mm. You know, you kind of want to wait. Let me wait until they are mm. done with maybe grade seven. Let yeah. me wait until they are older. Because then, I mean, you had, like you said, your dream house and feel like you've settled. You've put in a lot of work already. Right. And yet now you are responding to, to the instruction to move, right. despite the discomfort you are living, what what is that process like, hmm. of, that obedience process like? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I do remember that we, um, I pretty much immediately, as I recall, mm. booked a trip to fly, just Steve and I again, to the West, wow. to go back to Vancouver, and um, just to pray mm-hmm. and determine mm-hmm. what was God saying. and. And what was the timing? Mm-hmm. And um, Steve probably remembers details better than I do. But I know that we, when we returned, uh, we we did, hadn't told the boys why we were going west hmm. for that weekend. We just said, you know, we're going on some ministry and we'll come back. So when we returned, we then did sit down with them. So it must have been in April because it was Easter time. Mm-hmm. And, um, and telling them that this is what we feel God is telling us to do. Mm. And... You know, when you tell your children that, they're not excited about it. Yeah, they've moved they, a lot already. Yeah, and they're not. They th- immediately they think of what they're going to lose, mm. right? Because they don't they don't know what God's taking them to. Mm-hmm. But for me, that's a really important part of the process. Is um, even though we can't see what exactly God's going to do, mm. it's that faith that says, "I trust Him." If he's telling me now is the time, Mm -hmm. then he has all the details Mm -hmm. worked out Mm -hmm. that I don't have. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one of the huge things moving back to Vancouver was that it's at that time, and I don't know if it still is, the most expensive city in Canada. And when we left there, we were actually living in the suburbs, but we felt like God was telling us we had to go into the city, which is even more expensive. And so that was one consideration. Mm-hmm. And when you go to church plant, and it's not like some church is inviting you to come be the pastor. It's like you're going to go and start, and start from nothing. So no provision, n- no knowledge of what the provision is going to be. How are but we you going are to... living a life of certainty where yeah. you're assured of a yeah. home. And yeah. Wow. So um, crazy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it feels that way. <laughs> and I remember, uh, so my m- my mom had left British Columbia and come to back to Ontario, where our fa- family originally was from, in order to be in the same location as us. Mm-hmm. And one of my brothers had moved his family back to Ontario mm-hmm. in order to be where we were. And now we were leaving them and going the other way. And I could remember even years earlier what my mother's face looked like when she said goodbye to us in the Vancouver airport she's you know her four grandchildren Mm -hmm. grandsons are leaving and and her her only daughter and then now we're on the other end of the country and I'm telling her again God is telling us and she said when and I said I feel that we're supposed to leave by the first of July the beginning of July and she said no that's not that's too early and this was in April right and I said that's just what I sense God's saying. Wow. And Steve and I were in agreement on that. And um, so we, 
we progressed, mm -hmm. put our house on the market, and it, it didn't sell. And we had arranged to be at a vineyard conference in Anaheim, California, mm -hmm. uh, probably, the th I don't remember, maybe around the 14th or something. No, less than that. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. Somewhere early July. And we'd kind of mapped out our route. This is before you could get your map on your, <laughs> on your phone. Yeah. And we knew what route we were going to take and how long it was going to take us that we would land in that place at the right I time. The problem was our house hadn't sold. And... It's not wise to leave a house Without that isn't sending. sold. Um, and we had amazing faithful friends who were willing to oversee things for us. So we actually packed up everything in the house in boxes, but we left the beds look were made. You know, there were no sheets on them, but yeah. they looked like they were, and there uh -huh. was, you know, the house looked lived in enough. Uh -huh. You know, now they do staging of houses. Yeah. I didn't know anything about that back then, but we left it looking lived in enough mm -hmm. that when people came to look at it, they could they kind of figure get, yeah. get an idea. Mm -hmm. And so I remember we're in Anaheim. So that was a huge step of faith, like leaving the house with the Lord. Like, we need this money, Lord, but you said go, so we're going. <laughs> to what? <laughs> Go to the hill country. He said. Oh, <laughs> so we're, I remember being in Anaheim and uh, an offer came in on the house. And we actually sat down with our Canadian vineyard uh, leaders and and just talked it through with them because it was like $20,000 mm -hmm. less than what we felt we should get for the house. Hmm. And I don't know, somehow every time God has us move with goes that way for us I don't know why but he does, God doesn't care as much about money as <laughs> as we do you know like he just it's just, just money. Like, like yeah just, <laughs> just trust me with exactly this. exactly so I remember um this friend saying um and this has been a principle for me ever since mm -hmm. he said do you have more faith for God to for you to wait and God to bring another buyer with mm -hmm. more money mm -hmm. Or do you have more faith to sell to this buyer and God makes up the money some other way mm -hmm. at some other point? And um, I actually knew the answer right away because God had already said, go. He didn't say, wait. Wow. He said, go. <laughs> and so we needed to go. We needed to cut that tie mm. and, and trust him. And so we did all the paperwork, signed all the papers, and the house was sold. And then we... We drove from California up to Vancouver, and now we needed a place to live with our four boys. <laughs> and uh, we couldn't afford to, to buy in Vancouver. It's far too expensive. So we needed a place to rent. To rent and we needed a big enough house for four boys, and we need and church planting and groups of people in your house. And we needed um, a school district that we thought would be the right thing for the boys. Because your and approach to church planting is... You get into this community and then you first start like a house church. That's right. So it grows inside the house and then it can find a venue. Exactly. And you have four boys. And we have four boys and we really don't know hardly anybody. Wow. And the Lord did allow us to meet up with some people that were interested in starting a vineyard church. Mm -hmm. And so um, he kind of took care of that part. And we, f we did. We found a house to rent. Well, actually, some of those local people helped us. They found a house to rent. And... Um, and we were able to move in on the first weekend in September, which mm -hmm. in North America is called Labor Day weekend. Mm. And so it was in a school district. We, we, there was a certain school we were aiming for, even this. So we were looking. We've, our boys are very musical, mm -hmm. not sports in our family, music. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so there was a school we were aiming for. Yeah. Um, but this house was the next high school over. Wow. And, um, but we, it was what was available, and it, and it felt right. Mm -hmm. And so we... we did a contract to rent. So we got our boys into this school. And I remember the first day of school taking them into the high school. Um, so was it all but Ben maybe? I can't remember. Or maybe there's still two older boys. Anyway, we go in and this school is really old. It's a lovely old building in Vancouver. Mm. But they'd been lobbying to have it torn down and build a new school. So mm. we walk in the front do door of this beautiful old school and the whole front glass case where they usually have trophies and stuff, mm -hmm. there's like yellow caution tape and um, 
like and it's all asbestos broken. <laughs> that has fallen from the ceilings and broken things and and they had buttons you know that you little metal buttons that you could pin on that said build a new mcgee that was the name of the high school oh my goodness. and i'm like well, what have i done to my that, children that's not like the, the Last, that is not the best welcome <laughs> no, exactly. sign you want to see as a exactly. parent. So oh. there we were. But, you know, that school, it turned out, had the most incredible music program that we wow. didn't know about. And that same building, the boys started in choir, and they would have like 7 a.m. choir practices. Mm -hmm. And they... they all have amazing voices and so they they quickly were integrated into this um, music scene particularly Tim and then eventually Jeff but um, and when you walked in the front door mm -hmm. the auditorium w doors were right in front of that in the hallway and you would walk in and it was their their music teacher always had them singing sacred music wow. so it was like you walked in and there was worship happening Wow. <laughs> it's just so we had so many years of great concerts at that school. It was really a blessing. And that glass was still broken with tape. So yeah. the tape. And just how sometimes we get to miss the opportunity mm. to see what God is doing. Uh, because, you know, maybe some sometimes the things that come to us are not like glamorous, they don't yeah. look attractive. And so when you look at them you can think that is not God's idea. Right. And yet there, you know, like you say they had the best music program right. and, and then they did tear the school down and yeah. build a new school and the the younger two boys got mm -hmm. to graduate from the new school so amazing yeah faith walking by faith faithful yeah wow yeah. so did you finally like settle in and then plant we the did church? and so we planted the church and it grew um it was called the vancouver south vineyard and um god was very faithful the holy spirit moved um just a lot of amazing um, stories that came mm. about through that and seeing God's faithfulness. But I told you we were we were renting yes. our house. And then uh, we actually had to move to a different rental house. So you know all about that. <laughs> We've been telling your stories. And um, and that Sorry, then involved right. having to drive the kids back to yeah. the school because it, no, it was no longer within walking distance. And we knew that we could in the natural we could never afford to buy a house mm -hmm. in that city um and that was hard because we had taken i think we had we had a certain amount of equity like a small amount mm -hmm. that we had just basically parked like if we should ever be able to save money and mm -hmm. to buy a house then we've got a little tiny to start with thing to start with yeah. and um and again through scripture one year the lord spoke to me and he he told me he wanted us to buy a home hmm. and i'm like okay lord that that would be great how are we gonna Could do I that do it? <laughs> <laughs> like i have wow. no clue we have we don't have the money and mm -hmm. you know you're raising four at that point we were mm -hmm. moving toward four teenagers and um and i felt like god gave me a picture mm -hmm. of, that we were going to so we'd been in rental housing and when you're in rental housing Sometimes you're not even allowed to paint the walls. Mm -hmm. Like you, yeah. you wouldn't have been able to do your purple and mm -hmm. and everything. Um, and the Lord, what the Lord showed me was like a blank canvas that I would walk into a house and all the walls would be white. Mm -hmm. And and in my mind, it was an empty house. Yeah, even, I think. And um, and and he just he he wanted to bless me with this opportunity. I love color. I love pattern. Mm -hmm. um, I love things to feel cozy and homey and mm -hmm. welcoming. And when I think of white, it, it, it doesn't, doesn't doesn't speak those yeah. things to me. But what he showed me was this blank canvas, mm -hmm. and and basically the promise of provision. And so our listeners, wow. many of you may have promises from God, mm -hmm. and He may have given you pictures or scriptures that have told you what God wants to do for you, mm -hmm. and. Um, so we, Steve and I sat down and we talked about it and we tried to figure out what we could afford in terms of mortgage and we didn't, we didn't think we would have enough for down payment. In Canada, the laws are quite strict mm -hmm. about you have to have a certain percentage of down, down payment, payment so you yeah. don't get into a mortgage that's more than you Forever. can afford. Yeah. And so um, we kind of made a, a, a bit of an idea budget-wise what we could manage and we started looking. And um, within the city of Vancouver, 
there are what I describe as gray stucco boxes. Mm -hmm. um, so the year that we're talking now is um, early 90s, I guess, mid 90s. No, we'd been renting for a while. Anyway, we these gray stucco boxes were built after the World War, Second oh. World War. And so there are small houses, usually have a basement, mm -hmm. so maybe two bedrooms up and more one, in the basement or something. And, and um, they're, they're on smaller lots, they're boring looking, and n n nothing really to attract you to, to them. To, to them. <laughs> <laughs> like it's very, very ordinary. Yeah, like. and, uh, and too small for us, really. Yeah. And, um, and Steve's like, I'm not gonna live in a gray stucco box. And I'm like, well, I don't want to live in the suburbs where maybe we could afford more because mm -hmm. our church is in the city. And mm -hmm. I, I just, we need our family time together and I don't want to spend it driving on the roads. And so um, so we looked, we actually ended up figuring out that if we had a suite that we could rent out, mm -hmm. we could afford maybe to buy. Mm -hmm. And so we found a house and we, um, we actually put in an offer on it. We thought, okay, here we go. <clears throat> and then it didn't pass the inspection. And there were a lot of things wrong with it that you couldn't see. And so that was actually God saving Same, us from yeah, yeah. <laughs> this bad situation. Don't do this. But you know what? We were really discouraged. Mm -hmm. And we quit. We stopped looking. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I think that was around September or something. And going into the new year, the Lord spoke to me. And he said, I did want to give you a house, house last year. but you have to look for it. You have to find it. Wow. I'm like, all right then. <laughs> so we we started to just kind of expand our thinking. We had decided that maybe this, having the suite wasn't the best idea. Mm. And now we're getting to, yeah, we, it was going into the 2000s because the boys were starting to get old enough that they weren't going to be living mm -hmm. at home. And so we would have two boys still living at home. And um, so we could maybe buy a little bit smaller. Anyway, one day I looked. Um, I saw an ad and it was for a townhouse. So, you know, they're, that's like joined. Yeah. They're, they're like row housing. Mm -hmm. And, but it was right down by the Fraser River. And hmm. I thought, oh, that, that'd be nice. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice to be where we could walk. And so I went to look at this, <clears throat> at this place. And again, trying, you know, praying all the way. Like, that's life, people. We need to pray all the time. All like, the Lord, time. show me. Yeah. Show me what you're doing. So I remember going with one of the boys, and we looked at this open house of this townhouse. And uh, and then I looked, you know, to a little stroll around in the area. And, and the real estate agent said, well, what do you think? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, it's very attractive, but um, it's too small for what we need. And... And she, I said, it's in budget and it's attractive, but it's too small. She goes, oh, well, I have a cheaper one the next block over that's bigger. Hmm. I was like, why is the bigger one cheaper? cheaper. And she said, you'll see. So she says, I can take you there after the open house. Mm -hmm. So I called Steve and I said, can you come and meet us so that we look at this thing together? <clears throat> so he brought the other son and uh, we went into this place and I walked in and every wall was still the builder's white paint wow. and it was dirty um, and the carpets were dirty but it was all white just like you saw just like I saw and I walked in and it's it's like I had never seen a house quite like this it was like multi levels um, and it had two different living spaces which is really helpful when you have teenage Kids, boys yeah. um, and it had a big enough kitchen with an eating area and it had a dining room and it had four, one, two, three, four bedrooms. Wow. And two and a half baths, I think, I don't even remember. But I was like, just a perfect, this is it, this is it. And um, we were able to negotiate the price, mm -hmm. God opened the doors, we could get a mortgage and we moved in. And we actually, that's the longest we ever lived in a house in our married life. It was nine years in that yeah. space. And um, hmm. God's provision, Jehovah hmm. Jireh, you know, he goes ahead of us. And so and to go back to where I started, people ask, well, how do you know? I was going to come to that. <laughs> that That is, you're living on so many ifs mm -hmm. and buts, you yeah. know, kind of thing. Like if, you know, we shall go and then if this ha works out, it will, if this, you know, yeah. but then this, you know, and then sometimes 
um, people don't like to be in a place where they are not sure. That's true. Where the next meal is going to come from, which school their children are going to go to, how they are going to, you know, survive the next day. And I feel like that that kind of I don't know if it's I don't know how they call it in English. You can help me with a better word. You know, bubble or like worry or anxiety kind mm -hmm. of thing, or life. You know, it's kind of like modeled out in life that you need to be sure, you need to have guarantee. Mm -hmm. And I feel like sometimes that is a huge hindering um, to our obedience to God. Yeah. And this walk of faith that we talk about, experiencing the, the supernatural provision of God, you cannot get to see that when you are in that particular bubble of, you mm -hmm. know, I want to f have things figured out. And some people are just gifted organizers. Like they want to have a clear plan. They want mm -hmm. to know from here, I get here, I get here. Like they have mapped it all out. Right. So any uncertainty causes a shaking. Like yeah. it's just, uh, they'll freak out. They'll be like, no, no, no. <laughs> that is too costly for me to believe God. Yeah. So help a person like that <laughs> <laughs> understand. So how do you hear God and how do you find peace mm -hmm. with all these you know, uncertainties. uncertainties and, and you're still here and your kids <laughs> turned out right. They're yeah. <laughs> They're amazing husbands. You yeah. have wonderful grandchildren and I've been to your house. I'm sleeping at your house right now. It's beautiful. But as, and now it's in another country. And that's another Again. story. <laughs> it's another so, story. So, <laughs> you know, how, you know, we, because we fear if I move, maybe my children, it won't mm, be safe. Mm. You know, you feel like there are so many things you want a life mapped out a certain yeah. way. And then God seems to be interrupting us all the time, telling us to do things yeah. that we love to do, but not our way. Sometimes, you know, right. he will insist on his way and you can't say anything about it. You know, one of the things that was his way was our children. So we really wanted to have kids. And, and then we were in a church that advised couples on these things and said oh you're not ready yet mm -hmm. and, and then I ended up getting pregnant and and then I ended up having four boys in five years okay and that's not that's not, that's not, doesn't sound like fun <laughs> it was it was a lot of hard work oh. but it's, it's still a lot of fun we have 14 grandchildren oh. now but but um I was just sharing this story with someone recently where I I felt guilty because Tim who's the oldest mm -hmm. I w he was always running and fetching for me. Oh. So he wasn't quite five when mm -hmm. Ben was born. And, you know, can you go get mommy this? Can you do this? Can mm -hmm. you do that? You know, and I was feeling guilty about treating him that way. Mm -hmm. And the Lord stopped me in my tracks. And I, how do you explain to people how you hear from God? I just, it comes into my head mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, that's God. So the Lord said to me, I have made him the firstborn for a reason. Wow. There are things that he's going to learn as the firstborn mm -hmm. that he needs for what I've called him to. Wow. And I just like, I stopped apologizing for mm -hmm. asking for his help. Um, and Tim has his own story to tell about what that looks like mm -hmm. from his end. But now he's the CEO of Impact Nations. And, and he handles. And he, he handles his dad his and I very well. <laughs> <laughs> With great grace. Well, um, great so job, I, Tim. I don't know how to explain yeah. that you hear God. I, I Another time I was apologizing about my children to the Lord. Because you mentioned the school thing. And I know yeah. as a mom how important that is. And another time. You know, when you're church planning, there's a lot of evening meetings. Mm -hmm. And I remember Steve and I going into people's houses with two two playpens under our arms and setting them up and putting babies to bed. And um, and then it get, gets to the stage where now there's four of them and you can't do that. Mm -hmm. So then hiring babysitters and feeling guilty yes. or having to do some travel. Right now you're traveling. And I shared this with your husband the other day, you're, actually. You're, you're, you're speaking my <laughs> story because just about, I think, three days ago, leading to Mother's Day. Yeah. I was really feeling guilty. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I have a two-year-old. and yeah. I don't want to just, you know, pick into your story, but I no, have a no, two-year-old. It's, it's moms. That's how and and I, I left my baby at home. And yeah. um, it's, you know, this week they're supposed to be back to school. They, they didn't go back to school oh. because daddy needs to first go back home and then, you know, somebody needs to drive them up, right. pick, drop Pay them, the pick them, and, and then <laughs> do all those. And, and I'm here, and I'm the mom. And yeah. and I just, you know, felt like, well, everyone is celebrating mothers today. And um, I don't I don't know if my kids are celebrating me. Mm. So I had a call with them on Mother's Day. And I don't even know they knew it was Mother's Day. Mm. So because no one mentioned Happy Mother's Day to me, for, you know. And, yeah. and they, they just, you know, were just telling me how, 
they are having fun, who ate popcorn, who did this, <laughs> and you know, just going about. And and then when I saying, okay, bye, talk to you later, Israel is like, Papa, mommy, like with this beautiful smile. Yeah. And I said, well, they're fine. They're fine. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and what the Lord said to me when I was feeling guilty because. Let's face it, moms, it's it's easy to do that and the world yeah, can put that on of you. Course. And I don't I don't want to go through life ever feeling guilty. And so you have to separate out what's real and what's not. And mm-hmm. so the Lord again, the Lord broke in and he said he said when you're away from your children, I bring the people that they need in their lives. I just shared that with Isaac, your husband, the other day. God brings other people into your children's lives to add to them. And it's not that you're taking something away. God's adding something. And moms you, and dads, you need to know that, that God, it's all part of who he is. He can provide for your children better than you can, right? He knows who they need, what they need, when mm. they need it. We just had the privilege of staying with Tim and Bethany's kids while they were in India. That was a gift. Like, they're thankful. They were mm-hmm. thankful to us that they could be gone. And I'm like, are you kidding? I got to hang out with my grandchildren for 10 days. Like... So, wow. um, yeah, we need to trust God, people. Mm-hmm. We need to trust God. We need to mm-hmm. trust Jehovah Jireh. Mm-hmm. We need to pray and ask him questions and expect the answer. Hmm. That's the thing. Sometimes we pray and ask, and then we're not really expecting him to talk. And I, I get up every day with the expectation that he's going to lead me through that day. Amen. And so here we are doing our third podcast of the day <laughs> because wow. that's what God's doing today. Mm-hmm. And next we're going to go and go shopping and get ready for all the speakers staying at the house. And, you know, but in this moment, this is where God was for you and I and yeah. for our listeners. And so and for I, Isaiah, who's faithfully taking yeah. care of us here. And so listeners, I want to encourage you. You can hear God mm-hmm. and he can direct you mm-hmm. and it can be the simplest of things Mm -hmm. that you need direction on. Mm -hmm. It could be the order of what you get done in your day, or it could be what you have to go shopping for that day. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I know his faithfulness. And, um, you know, he tells us to pray without ceasing. It's not like it's an assignment Mm -hmm. and we have to have our prayer list in front of us Mm -hmm. and be praying through and, and, you know, Not for me. It's a conversation that goes on all day, Mm -hmm. every day. That's what praying without ceasing looks like. And if he brings in uh, one of my grandchildren to be praying for while I'm driving my car, that's what I pray for. If he brings in a world war, Mm -hmm. or, you know, not a world war, uh, but the war in Ukraine is Mm -hmm. happening right now. If he brings that in, then that's what I'm praying about. Because Mm -hmm. there's someone in Ukraine that needs my prayer right now. And I don't know who that person is, but I'm going to be faithful to to pray it. And so I just want to encourage you if you're listening, that um, God has abundant life for you Mm -hmm. and he has a plan and a purpose and he has the ability to speak in a way that you hear. Mm -hmm. You're not going to hear the same way that I do Mm -hmm. or Annabelle does. He knows how to communicate with you because you're his child. Mm -hmm. And um, so how about if I just pray for our listeners? Before you pray, mom, I just, I feel I can't not share this. Um, when the disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray, he taught them the Lord's Prayer. And then he starts with, Our Father who art in heaven, allowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, your will be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. So the first part of the prayer is really exalting the Lord and, mm-hmm. and you know, magnifying him and recognizing that he's the Father and all that. And then this other, like, which I want to you know, call like the second part, comes down now to us mm-hmm. and says, no, give us this day our daily bread. Mm-hmm. Like, and as we talk about Jehovah Jireh, you know, as you were sharing, I just started having, you know, thoughts in my mind about how he cares for what we need Mm -hmm. in a day because today is different from tomorrow and it's going to be different from the following day it's different from what i needed what i need right now is different perhaps from what i needed yesterday and sometimes i even don't know what i really need in today that's right i'm just my eye my eyes are fixed on something so narrow and i think that is all i need and then he he has the ability to just you know provide for all the other details that you're not even thinking about. When we when he teaches us, like Jesus taught the disciples, pray for the daily bread today. Mm-hmm. And I know that I've heard from you know different teachers of the word. Daily bread is both the word of God and it's also meeting the physical needs mm-hmm. that we have in the day. 
and while you know you were sharing about the guilt uh, that comes with mothering and traveling and all that and you we've not talked about this since i came here we've not had this conversation but it was it was a thing in my spirit and yesterday was mother's day it was sunday and it was there i was feeling guilty you mm -hmm. know and i was feeling you know i am am i really a good mom and mm -hmm. for some reason even if, when, if we, you go to my WhatsApp uh, status or my Facebook, I didn't post my kids. I didn't write anything about myself because for some reason I was just feeling like, oh, yeah, you know, you're not doing the well. The enemy was like, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and yet I'm the person who's, you know, I'm always on TV, on radio, you know, mm. in spaces, telling mothers how they need to create time with their children, <laughs> how they need to be there for them, how they need, you know, and then it comes back to you. And, and so then like, the enemy is like, you yes. call yourself a good mother. You understand? <laughs> Are you doing that? You know, yeah. and then, but you've said something so powerful that I've never thought about, that then God provides for your children, the people that they need, yeah. you know, in that time. When we moved into the new house you've been where we, 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 we moved in right now yeah. and we have this neighbor that came in to say hello the lady. Yes. So on Saturday Jaira had a high temperature and she drove, you know, she came back uh, from church practice and she found Jaira had a high temperature and she drove Jaira to hospital, paid the hospital bill, came back and only sent me a voice note to tell me what happened. After the fact, after that, after everything, and then Jer Jer Fiona, my you know our girl that yeah. is with them, and my sister Ruth, they were telling me. Then she did grocery shopping for them, and you know with yogurt and stuff, and and I'm like, I've not known this lady for even two months, right? right. I I don't think we are almost making two months in that new place. That was another provision yeah, story. <laughs> a, another provision story, and yet God has put a. A mother figure yeah. while I am away, yeah. you know, through my sister, you know, first it was my sister, then my, my mother-in-law now, my, my, my neighbor who is, who are minding my babies while I'm away. And I was here feeling so sad mm. as a mom that, you know, I'm kind of not doing it enough. And sometimes when I call the network is not good and the internet connection at their end is failing and I'm getting frustrated. I feel like I'm not talking with them enough. And right. this morning you asked me, have you talked to your children? And I'm like, oh, I didn't, you know, I was so tired last night yeah. trying to sleep and it was not working. And yet, so God today knew. And maybe this is why it wasn't working, right? Because yeah. all of this was in you. Exactly. Head. <laughs> yeah. So God knew today that I needed to hear this word. Mm. You know, it need, I needed to understand that He's in control. He has my children That's right. the same way he has the children and the girls under the remnant generation. Mm -hmm. So daily bread right here mm -hmm. for the physical needs and for the spiritual Amen. ones. Amen. I think you should pray. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, mom. Pray. Okay, I'll pray. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Father, oh. we do say holy is your name. Yes, Lord. We do glorify you. We mm. do honor you. We do lift you up. Yes, Lord. Hallowed be thy name. Mm. Lord, we thank you that you do provide us mm -hmm. our daily bread. Mm -hmm. Lord, for our spirit, for our souls, for our bodies, you give us what we need. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I pray right now for someone who's in a situation mm -hmm. where they they don't know you to be their provider. Yes, Lord. They don't know you to be one who is speaking personally to mm -hmm. them. Yes, Lord. Lord, I ask that you would come to them mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. in a very tangible way. Mm -hmm. Would you give them a personal message? Yes, Lord of your love for them, mm. that you see them, mm -hmm. that your arms are around them, yes, Lord. keeping them safe, that you see their children and their mm. families. Yes, Lord. Lord, you're aware of um, maybe a need for provision of financial mm -hmm. uh, things, or maybe it's the, there's healing needed yes. in them or in their family. You, Lord, we're asking that you would come and be Jehovah Jireh yes, to Lord. our listeners today. Yes, Lord. And Father, I want to thank you for years and years, decades of faithfulness, uh, for uh, walking with me, walking with Steve and I, and being faithful to our family. I just thank you, Lord. I honor you for that. And I ask, Lord, that you would uh, continue to glorify your name in our listeners' lives, that they will have testimonies of how you have walked with them and led them, and uh, take them by the hand. Thank you, Lord thank God. You, Lord. We thank, thank you for Jesus. that. Lord, I ask thank that you, Lord. our conversations would continue mm -hmm. to bring encouragement to yes, people. Lord. 
that they would hope for a restoration that they know they mm. need but maybe couldn't see how it's going to come. Yes, Lord. I ask that you'd bring people into their lives mm. that could um, pray with them or counsel them mm-hmm. and um, walk with them. Yes, Lord. Lord, we need one another, and mm-hmm. we thank you for one another. Yes, and Lord. I speak blessing over them today. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.